Hey guys, this is Kristen. Welcome back to my channel. I blog at lifeofstones.com where I share our personal financial journey to help you budget your best life. Today I have some very exciting news to share. After months of working on it, I finally released my Begin to Budget bundle. And one of the questions I've been getting the most often from people who bought it is how do we set it up? So I want to show you today exactly how I set it up to manage my family's finances and I thought I would bring you along for a tour. Last week I finally launched my Begin to Budget bundle. It's available on Etsy for purchase. This is a 29 page printable budget binder that will help you completely organize your finances pay off debt and save money. I started using it myself and I wanted to show you exactly how I set it all up. So here is my begin to budget bundle. Obviously I just printed the cover page here and put it in a plain white binder. These tabs I ordered from Staples, they are Avery tabs. However, they are actually on clearance, these specific colors. I will leave a link to some similar ones down below in the description box. And I also have my budgeting pens. I've talked about these before. These are Pilot Friction pens and they are erasable. I absolutely love them. I have a couple different packs and designs. They are my absolute favorite because I hate having scribbles and cross out marks on my budget. So this way I can make any changes as often as I need and have it still look nice. This Begin to Budget bundle is designed specifically around my personal method of budgeting. So I'm going to show you how I have this set up, but I want you to understand that you can set it up however you want to. What works for me might not necessarily work best for you. So feel free to do whatever you want. I just wanted to give you an idea of how I do it and hopefully it's helpful to you. So I'm gonna open up the binder and I wanna show you that the first thing I do here is I print out a quick copy of my spreadsheet budget and I just go ahead and keep it here on the inside pocket for easy access. I look at this probably at least once a day just to get a quick overview of what's going on with our finances for the month. I also keep this here because I usually jot some notes down on the side of this. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just something that I have found has worked well for me, especially when I'm in a quick rush. If I make a purchase that I need to take out of my bank account, I'll just jot a little note on here quick. And at the end of the month, I'll probably just toss it because I do have most of this data in my spreadsheet. I also do want to highly recommend, if you are new to budgeting in general, I think it's very important that you get started using pen and paper to create your budget, which is exactly why I have handwritten budgeting sheets in this bundle. As you get a little bit more familiar, as you get a little bit more comfortable, you can absolutely move to a spreadsheet-based budget or even some sort of online tool. Again, you're gonna wanna stick with whatever works best for you and your specific financial situation. I just feel that using a pen and paper in the beginning really helps you get a much better grasp on your finances. The next thing I have here is just a little pocket. This is where I keep my checks, my deposit slips. This is just the little check register for my business. I do keep that on the small one for now because I have very few transactions at this point. I just keep this in here again for easy access. I like to have everything together. That way if I come downstairs and I do my budget at the dining room table, I have everything I need with me instead of having to run back upstairs. So the first thing I have in here is my checkbook register. I'm gonna kind of put my hands on it because this is actually filled out and you can see all my personal transactions in here. So this is the checkbook register. You will find this in the Begin to Budget bundle. I have actually changed the colors of it, but it's the same page. And what I do is I just print out a bunch of these. I prefer to keep everything on one page instead of in that little register for my personal checking account since we have a lot more transactions. I like having more room to write. I like having margins if I need to jot some notes down. You can print out as many sheets of this as you want. It's an instant download. Anytime you need more, you can just go ahead into your computer and print as many as you need. So I keep my checkbook in the front because I use it so often. 
that it's just a little bit easier than having to thumb through the whole binder. The next thing I do is I take the expense overview, which you'll find in the budget bundle. And the reason I put the expense overview first, and I actually put it in a sheet protector, is because this gives you an overlook of everything you have to pay for the entire year. So it has a space to do your monthly expenses, your quarterly expenses, and your yearly expenses. So I just have everything written down here. I do not include my account numbers because I knew I was going to show this on video. So you can go ahead and fill this out and keep it right in the front. That way you can really easily figure out exactly what you have to pay each month. And what I do is use this expense overview to help me fill out my calendar each month. And I'll show you the calendars in a few minutes. On the back of the sheet protector, I also keep my accounts overview. Now, again, I don't have this filled out yet because I knew I was going to make this video. You can use the accounts overview for whatever accounts you want. In fact, you can even print multiples of these out as well. How I plan to use this is just to keep all our bank account numbers here. We do still have one credit card. I'll list that information here. So you will list the account name, the account number, you can keep the actual website where you go to log in to access your account. And there's a place to also keep track of your username and password since we are inundated with passwords nowadays. And it gets so difficult to keep track of them all, right? Even though I do know most of mine in my head, this is a really good place to keep all of our information. God forbid something should happen that I can't handle the accounting or the finances for a month. My husband has absolutely no clue where any of this stuff is. In fact, I would seriously give him $5 if he even knew the name of our bank. <laughs> okay, just kidding, just kidding. But seriously, he doesn't know any of this information. He would have no idea how to access it. So I really wanted to include this because I think it's very important that everybody that's head of the household and participating in your finances is able to access this information. So the next thing I have here is just a tab for savings and I have easily the emergency fund tracker. We are currently on baby step three. Our goal for baby step three is $15,000 in our emergency fund and I just wrote our goal date up here as well which is May 31st, 2019. So this is almost just like a register as well. Anytime I make a deposit, I will just keep track here. If we have an emergency and have to draw from this account at all, I will list what the reason is, how much we took, and what the balance is. So it's really just a good place to keep all of the tracking for your emergency fund. I also want to note that every sheet in my bundle has a couple of lines at the bottom for notes. And if you're as neurotic as I am, then you don't like scribbles all over your pages. So I thought having a little section on each page to jot down a couple of notes if necessary would just help keep you more organized. The other thing I have in the savings tab is sinking fund trackers. And how you use these is you will print out a separate page for every single one of your sinking funds. The reason I thought sinking fund trackers were so important is that it's just not realistic to have 20 different bank accounts. And I don't know how many sinking funds you have, but we have quite a few, and quite a few of them we keep in our bank. So this way we can keep all the money in our lump account, our ally savings account, for example. Long time ago, you used to be able to set up different sub accounts, but now you have to open new accounts. So I don't want to keep track of 10 different accounts. For me, it's easier to dump all the money in one account and just keep track of it on these sheets. So I kind of ran out of time when I was working on this yesterday, but the first one I printed out was Christmas for next year, 2019, and then I'll go ahead and print out the rest of them. We're going to have, for example, a new car fund sinking fund, our car insurance sinking fund, anything else you wanna save for, you can go ahead and print out a separate sheet for it and keep track of it right here. Now, the rest of these tabs, as you can see, are all months of the year. So I'm really just going to go through the November tab since that is the month we are currently in. Although by the time you see this video, it's probably going to be December. However, all of these will look the same, but most of them are pretty much empty at this point since we're not in that month. So what I'll do when November is over, I'll take this entire packet and I will move it to the back because I always want to have the current month right here in the beginning of my binder. I just don't feel like thumbing through all the way towards the back of the binder. Again, personal preference, set yours up however you like. 
Now I wanna mention that I do have these bills kind of flipped around so that people can't see my personal information. But we're looking here on the November tab and what I do is anytime a bill comes in the mail, I put it in the front of this tab and this is where I keep all my bills due. That way I can quickly look to see what I have to pay each week. When the bill is paid, I mark my information on it, uh, the check number, the amount I paid and the date, and then I put it on this side of the paid bills. Now if I kept these in there all year long, eventually, the binder would probably get too thick. So when the month is over, I will likely just staple or paper clip these all together and put them in my file box. The next thing I have is the calendar. I'm gonna take this out of here so you can see. And I have a calendar for every month of the year in my budget bundle. And what I really want you to do with the calendar is go ahead back here to your expense overview and take a few minutes and take any of these expenses that are due in this month and go ahead and write them on that specific day. The other thing I do is I go ahead and I mark the paydays on this calendar and any kind of birthdays or events that you might have that you might need to spend money, go ahead and mark that on the calendar. What that's going to do is it's going to really help you get a very good idea of everything that you need to include in your budget for that specific month. The next thing I have in the month tab is the financial goals worksheet. Again, this is blank because we have not had the time to sit down and discuss these yet. If you do a monthly budget meeting with your spouse or partner or even your accountability partner, I highly suggest you fill this sheet out together every single month and also take the time, especially with the new year approaching, it's the perfect time to have a big budget meeting for the entire year and fill out this financial goal sheet for your yearly goals. Then you can keep that in a sheet protector as well and it'll give you something to review every so often and make sure you're on track towards reaching those goals. You can set as many goals as you want. I have five listed here. Maybe you only have one goal and that's to pay off your debt or hit your emergency fund. Maybe you have multiple goals either way. This tracker will help you set your goals, the date you want to achieve them, and then it also has a couple different prompts for you to figure out what you need to be doing day in and day out to help you achieve those goals. So you can go ahead and include a goal sheet for you to complete before the month begins for every single month. So now you have your calendar, you have your goals, and now it's time to go ahead and do your actual budget. Now, as I said, this month I did do my budget on the spreadsheet. What I normally do is go ahead on the monthly budget sheets here and I do a rough draft to make sure I have everything out of my head and I really like to look on paper. Like I said, there's just something even now, almost two years into this journey for us, there's just something about writing it down. I don't know what it is, you just get a better feel for your finances, I highly suggest especially if you bought the bundle, that you make use of the monthly budget sheets. On the next page, I do have another spot here. You can just jot some goals down if you don't want to take the time to fill out the actual goals worksheet. Here's a space you can keep track of that. Again, I have a note section, maybe what worked last month, what you need to improve upon this month, and just a little place for some reflection here. The monthly budget sheets are very self-explanatory. There's a place for you to estimate every single expense and a place for you to come back after you've paid that bill or after the month is over and enter the actual amount that was spent on each category. This is a template for a zero-based budget, which means when you sit down to do your budget, you take all of your income, you subtract all of your expenses, you should be left with zero dollars at the end of the budget. And that doesn't mean that you spend every dime you have, but if you do your whole budget and you have $400 left, then you need to decide whether you're going to put that $400 to savings, whether you're going to put that $400 to debt. You really wanna give every dollar a name. But I have a whole bunch of budgeting videos in a budgeting playlist, I will link that up above. And you can go ahead and watch those for some more budgeting help. And the last thing I have in here is an expense tracker. Tracking your expenses is so important to financial success. If you are into this journey a while and you're very good with your money, you're very good with your budget, then maybe you don't need to do this every month, but I highly recommend you take the time to track your expenses if you're just getting started especially if you're feeling very overwhelmed and you're not sure where to start and you're feeling very frustrated with 
budgeting and finances as a whole, tracking your expenses is a great place to start. You can use this tracker. It's best if you can do it for a full month. That's why I have the month up there. If not, three weeks, two weeks, even a week, anything you can do is going to be better than nothing. The point is really to see exactly where your money goes. And I promise you, this will be such an eye-opening exercise for you. You can even pull this out and hang it on your fridge if you'd like, keep it in your car. Keep it wherever you will remember to use it. Track every single expense, track the category, obviously food, fun, miscellaneous, whatever categories you use. And at the end of the month, it's going to give you a much better idea of where you need to set your initial budget amounts. I mean, a budget can always be changed and edited and adjusted, but it's gonna give you a really great baseline of where you need to start and also give you a great idea of some things that you definitely need to cut from your budget. I'm just going to go ahead and flip to the back where I have the rest of the sheets from the binder. So the first thing I wanna show you is my savings tracker. This is great if you're a visual person like I am. Although I do have the emergency fund tracker, I just love the idea of coloring in these lines. We did this for our debt and I just love the visual representation of the progress that you're making. So you can go ahead and print this out. I actually printed mine on cardstock and you can see we haven't contributed to baby step three at all yet but we will. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that in the back of the book where I can really easily color it in every month. If you use my Begin to Budget bundle, I want you to know that the way the sheets print out are the order in which I think you should use them. So in the very beginning, I have the goals worksheet that we just looked through. And then I also have something called financial inventory. And this does have some instructions on the top. It also refers you to a blog post I wrote all about financial inventory. And this is a very simple concept with a fancy name. The whole point of this is really to just put every part of your finances here on one sheet in front of your face. So very simply, you're going to take all of your expenses that are recurring, you're going to list those here in the amount and total them up. You're going to take all your outstanding debts and list those here and the balances and total them up. I just want you to take any non-retirement assets, list those here and list the amounts here. The point of this exercise is to really see the balance of your finances. So. Do you have too high expenses that you can't support? Do you have way too much debt? Or do you have a ton of non-retirement assets that maybe you could even liquidate to pay off your debt? Part of the reason we feel overwhelmed is because we really don't have a good grasp on our finances. We really don't know what is going on beyond paying our bills each month. So this is just an exercise for you and your partner or spouse or accountability partner to sit down together, look through all these categories and get a really good idea of where you sit at that exact moment with your finances. And that is how you're gonna decide which direction to go. You can't create a plan if you don't even know where you're starting from. The next sheet in here is a bill payment tracker. You can keep this in the front of your binder. I will use this as a resource myself just to kind of double check myself and make sure that everything due is paid off. There's just a spot to put your monthly bills, the due date, the amount, kind of like what we have on the expense overview in the beginning. But here there's a space to check off every time you pay the bill that month. So you can go ahead and check off the J for January, F, M, A, there's the letter for each month of the year. Moving down to the quarterly bills, you can check off in each quarter when that bill is paid. And then for your yearly bills, again, you can check off when you make that yearly payment. So for us, it is auto insurance that we pay yearly. And actually, as a note, I wanna write to myself to go ahead and check the rates for next year. The next page is a debt tracker. We are currently debt free, so I do not have to fill this page out at all, but I'm going to briefly add some information here just to give you a good idea of how this works. So let's go ahead and we are in November, December, January, February, March, April. Remember, you can print out as many of these as you need. So let's just say, 
that we have our Chase credit card here that we need to continue to pay off. And all I'm gonna do here is mark our payment amount. So we'll just say in November, we paid $500 and that brought our balance down to $1,250. And then we'll say in December, because of Christmas, perhaps we can only make a payment of 250. So that gives us a remaining balance of 1,000. It's just a great place to go ahead and track your payments that you can have a quick glance and see exactly where you're at with every debt at any given moment. The next page is your actual debt snowball worksheet. Here's a spot for you to list your estimated debt-free date. So again, we're just gonna fill this out. Let's say our debt-free date is 1-1-19. Wouldn't that be a great way to start the year? If you don't know how the debt snowball works, I have a whole video on it. I will link up in the card and you can watch that and it will teach you more clearly how to fill out this worksheet. But really the point is you list your debts from smallest to largest and you pay off each one. You're going to make the minimum payment on all the debts and you're going to work as hard as you can to pay off that first debt. So I'm just going to fill this out briefly. We'll just say we have a couple credit cards. This is what we just recently paid off when we became debt free. And we'll just say our chase, like we mentioned over there, is $1,250. How about our discover is $4,500 and maybe our city is 7,000. And our minimum payment currently is 100, 200, 300. This is how you're gonna use this worksheet. You're gonna go ahead and pay the minimum payment on these two debts, and then you're gonna pay the minimum payment plus everything else that you can afford that month. So we'll just say we throw everything else to it, and we are actually able to pay 1250 that month. Now that one's done, we can actually go ahead, cross that one off, and here's how this is going to work. You're not gonna have a new payment on your first debt because that is the debt that you're working very hard to pay off. So every extra cent you have, you're gonna go ahead and put it towards that chase until it's paid in full. When it's paid in full, you can go ahead and cross that off or put an X besides it, however you want to take care of that. And what you're now going to do is you're going to roll this minimum payment into your current minimum payment for your Discover card. So your new payment there is now going to be $300, plus any extra that you can find in your budget, you will pay on that Discover each month. But now the minimum you wanna pay is at least the $300 because you freed up the 100 from here. When the Discover is paid off, you're now going to roll both of them into your city card. So you're gonna take the $300 minimum payment plus 200, so that's five, plus 100, so you're now going to pay $600 on your city card, plus anything else you can find left in the month to go towards debt. So that's how you use the debt snowball worksheet. Again, I have a note section down here, and if you have any questions at all, just go ahead and leave them in the comments. The next page I have is the financial audit checklist. This is actually supposed to be up here with your financial inventory as part of your initial budget prep work. And I just wanna explain what this is. What I have here is a couple suggestions of things you can do right now today with your finances to try and save some money and I have a space for the date that you've performed these actions, the outcome, and some notes. So you can go down these. Some suggestions are like try to call your cable company and see if you can improve your rate or cancel your cable altogether. So if you go ahead and do that on December 1st, you're gonna give them a call, you're gonna see what they say. Maybe they give you a $25 rate reduction. So you can mark that down in your outcome. and perhaps they said this will be applied beginning the next month. So there's just a little spot for you to jot down anything additional. Maybe you wanna add the confirm number. I always try to ask them for a confirm number when I call any company. So there's a whole bunch of suggestions like that. And again, some extra room for you to come up with some of your own ideas to try and audit your finances. 
The next couple pages are just the checking register that I already showed you in the beginning. And I have an almost identical savings register for those of you that do really keep track of all of your debits and credits in your savings account. I never used to keep track of my savings account like that. I would just look at my bank. But we now have our life insurances coming out of there and we have been going back and forth taking some money out with our thousand dollar emergency fund so I think I'm going to start using this to keep track of that money in our savings account so that is it that is everything that is currently available in the begin to budget bundle so I hope you find this tool as helpful as I have to really organize your finances you know I used to use a small little planner and I just feel like I really needed the room to spread out. If you use a small binder, you could probably save yourself some paper and some ink and actually just print them two pages to a sheet and then you'll have the half sheets. And one other thing I wanna mention is initially I started designing this in more of these super bright rainbow colors because I love colorful things, but I really wanted to keep these a very minimalist design. I know personally when I purchase printables, I hate when I go to print them and it's full sheets like this with a ton of super bright saturated ink. The only thing I have like that is the cover page and if you don't wanna print the cover page, you don't even have to print it. I wanted to make sure, I tried to help keep your ink consumption low when printing this binder and I hope you guys love the binder as much as I do. I hope you find it useful and helpful. If you have any questions, let me know and also be on the lookout for some new items to be added to my Etsy shop. I have it linked down below, but I'm also going to break this out into a couple different smaller little packages as well. So that's the setup of my budget binder and how I organize my family's finances. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, I would love if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'll leave the link down below if you wanna get your own copy of my Begin to Budget Bundle. I just wanna tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you have a great day. Bye.